Actors Daily Bread. This is where I teach you how to crush your auditions, book more work, and live a life that you love. I am Christine Horn. Welcome. Known to many of you as the booking magnet, life and career coach for actors. I help actors just like you figure out how to burst through, how to get on TV, how to get in film, how to work your mindset, how to market yourself, and just how to just crush all around. Um, this is episode 220. Tonight I'm talking about how to stop procrastinating. Let me say it again for y'all in the back. How to stop procrastinating. <laughs> um, if this is your first time watching, I want to welcome you. Throw one, a one in the comments if this is your first time. If y'all been watching for a while, go ahead and put OG in the comments because you already know what it is. To so all my replay watchers who will watch this later, what's up, replay watchers? Love you guys. Shout out to Sarah who called me out. She sent me a DM. She said, what's up with the replay watchers? I went live uh, last week and I forgot to say it and forgot to give love to my replay watchers. So what's up, replay watchers? Well, okay, Michelle, welcome. You new to the goodness. Again, this is episode 220 of Actors Daily Bread, one of the best online shows for actors, if I do say so myself. So let's get into it. So I just got off uh, once a month, I have a group coaching call with my inner circle clients. Those are my VIP clients. We work together for six months on like a bunch of stuff, right? And once a month, we get together as a group and talk about whatever's on their, everybody's minds. And one of our members was talking about procrastination and how there were some things she's working on. And she wasn't the only one. There were several people who were putting some things to the back burner. And, you know, as we sit here in our quarantines, wherever you are watching in the world, um, you know, this is a chance to to really reassess the things that we said we wanted to do, to reassess the things that we said were important to us. And I went live earlier in our Hollywood Bound Actors Facebook group. If you're not in that free Facebook group, come on and join us. It's called Hollywood Bound Actors, just like our podcast is the Hollywood Bound Actor Podcast. And in there earlier today, I was just talking about, do a brain dump, first of all, on what's important to you. What is even on your to-do list, right? Morris Davis says, Facebook because Facebook is quiet, so I'm gonna just keep talking to Instagram. Um, but you know, that was the first thing I said, let's do a brain dump of what is even important to us, what was even on our to do list because we get so busy with auditions, life, work. Some of y'all got kids, husband, wives, girlfriends, and it's just like we get so used to being in the hustle and bustle that we forget what it is that we said were our dreams. What was the next thing we were actually thinking about? I was like, today I found my one of my old vision boards and I was like, what's on this thing? What did, what did I say? I, what do I want to do? I like, I forgot. I ain't even looked at it. I haven't even made a new one. What's up, Crystal Lee Brown? Right? So I think the first step before we even talk about procrastination is being clear about what is even important to us at this time. And so however you like to take notes, for me, I'm a pen to paper kind of gal. Um, journal, write it down, literally do a brain dump with no judgment. Don't worry about how it's going to get done, who you got to meet, how much money you're going to need. Not, that's not the point. The point is, what did you say you wanted to do? What was important to you? Is it writing that script? Is it taking that class? Is it updating your headshot, updating your website, calling your grandma? I put off calling my grandma for a week. I'm like, why are I calling my grandma yet? She 99. You better call your grandma. Right? So little simple things. So that's step one is just make a list. Do a brain dump of the things that you said were important to you because they, they popped in your head for a second. And sometimes we have these great ideas that pop in our head for a moment and then we forget to write them down or we forget to tell somebody and then it's a fleeting thought that's now gone. And so when we write it down, it becomes real. Now we have ownership of it. Even if we don't act on it, just the mere fact that it's written down makes it become real. If you do any studying on goal setting, I'm, I'm a self, uh, for personal development, like, uh, geek. So I stay listening to Brian Tracy and, you know, Brian Tracy, Jim Rohn, Zig Ziglar, they all teach you about writing your goals, writing them down, not just once a year. They're talking about like every morning. They talk about morning, nighttime, like go to sleep, dreaming about your, your dreams and your goals. Because when they're, when you see it in black and white, it's real. And it's a daily reminder. It's a daily reminder. It's different than, you know, some other things that we just take for granted. So that's number one. And if you suffer with procrastination, look, we all have things we procrastinate. And fact of the matter is another thing to look, think about 
is how does procrastination show up for you? So think about that, whether you're watching this live or the replay, think about it. How does it show up for you? Let me know in the comments, how does it show up for you? So for me, procrastination shows up for me by cleaning. I'd be like, oh, I got so much to do today. Oh, I got so much to do. I'm tired even before I started. Right, Orlando? I'm tired before I start. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna do every, I'm gonna get all this done. First, let me just do these dishes. <laughs> Let me just vacuum right quick. It'll take me 10 minutes, two to four hours later, I'm still cleaning something else. And I'm like, oh, Christine, you are procrastinating. You are putting off this thing. Let me know in the comments. I know y'all see y'all watching. How does procrastination show up for you? It's important to own how it shows up. If you have no idea, I don't think you're telling the truth. You know how it shows up. One of my clients today was like, I go to the gym. Instead of doing the work, I go to the gym. Or some people blame it on their kids. <laughs> Gabriel says he does that too. Like for me, it is cleaning, but I own it and I'm aware of it, and which is the biggest thing. So that's another key step, owning and recognizing how it shows up so that when it happens, you don't think, because here's the mistake, not the mistake. Here's how procrastination is cloaked. Procrastination is cloaked in productivity. So yes, you may have made your to-do list of all the things you need to, to do, but you're like, I didn't do that, but I mean, I cleaned this house top to bottom. Or Gabriel, like, I went to the gym, honey. I got, I got, I did them sit-ups. I took three classes. Like, I was productive today. But it's like, were you? Did you do what you said you was going to do? Because that's not what you set the day out to do. <laughs> you know, oftentimes we, do, we like to do what's pleasurable over what's profitable. And I'm not just talking about money in dollars and cents. I'm talking about what is profitable for our career, for our life, and for our forward motion. It feels good to just watch this TV show. It feels good just to clean. But oftentimes, we are putting off getting to the root of something. For one of my clients we were talking today, it was, I'm putting off this task because then I have nothing else to blame it on. If I'm not as good as I thought I was, I can blame it on that I didn't really put all my energy into it. I kind of half did it. I, I, I didn't do it full out. So we procrastinate, so we can blame it on that. Morris says, I'm guilty of being busy working out, right? Because that's still productive. It's cloaked in productivity, right? I mean, you gotta stay fine, right? I mean, that's being productive. <laughs> but let's be clear about what it says that you wanted to do. Um, so that's my next tip. So next tip also is, this is a hard question to ask, but it's a very great question to ask yourself. And this is what we talked about tonight in my inner circle. Um, I asked this young lady, I said, so she, we have a list. All my clients all have lists and goals, just like you. You all have goals, right? Um, hi, Time. Hi, William. Right? So we all have goals. So when you're procrastinating, the thing that you say is important to you, ask yourself this. What will happen as a result of me achieving this thing? So for instance, if it's a script you're trying to finish, what will happen? What will be the benefit of this script getting done? If I need to call that, that casting director or I need to call that person who said they could help me be my director of photography, what would happen? What would be the benefit? Well, the benefit would be I would get the film done or, um, I will, whatever it is, you know what it is. Be very clear on what the win is. I always tell my clients, what's the win, what's the why, what's it worth? Like figure those things out. Otherwise you have nothing to motivate you. Again, we're not getting caught up on how it's gonna happen, how much money's gonna take, how much help you're gonna need. We're clear on, man, if I can do this, this will help this. So to use my client again as an example, I, she needs to do watch a course. I have a course co called the agent attraction method where it teach you how to, teaches you how to get an agent. And I'm like, okay, just watch the course. Then we'll get on that next step to getting an agent. But she's not doing that. So I said, what's the cost of that? Well, if she does get an agent, that'll help her get more gigs. That'll help her get more auditions for bigger projects, right? It'll help her get to her next level. So why aren't you doing that thing? And that's where we have to get to that block. And then my next question is, so, okay, we're clear. First thing, if you're just joining us, welcome. We're talking about how to stop procrastinating, right? So we're talking about, first of all, we're gonna make a list. We're gonna do a brain dump. 
Second thing is once we make that brain dump of the things that we say we want to do and the things that we want to achieve, what would happen as a result of that? Like what, what would change in our lives? How would that help us? My next question for you is how long are you willing to go without that result? So let's just say it's bare, it's bare bones. I need to get a job. I need to go job hunting. But you're not going, you're not going job hunting. If you got a new job, it would be more money in the bank. You have more discretionary income. You could get some, some new headshots. You could take some classes, but you're not doing it. How much longer are you willing to sit in that? How much willing are you, how much longer are you willing to not have the thing that you want to have? Because you'll shout out, oh, I'm an actor, or I want to do this, and I'm going to do that. But you're not doing the things to help you get to the next level. We have to move away from just with doing what's pleasurable and start doing what's profitable. This is what we talked about tonight, and it was so, so, many, so many breakthroughs we had. Last tip I want to give you for tonight is this is something that becomes makes it real is to put it on your calendar if it's not on your calendar it doesn't exist so the same way some of you i'm seeing in the thread on instagram like no i go to the gym or i stay on youtube or i do or for me clean it's like if i have a client like i coach clients privately so if, if orlando or if jamzia or if, or if sean or michelle is on my calendar for 2 p.m tomorrow i have to honor that commitment what i look like being like two o'clock I got Michelle at two. I don't want, I'm going to just do these dishes. I'm going to just go to the gym instead of coaching Michelle who invested in time and money to be with me. That would be unacceptable, right? So the same thing goes for you. I dare you to put yourself first. I dare you to go for your dreams first. I dare you to put your appointments on your calendar and hold to them. They're non-negotiable, just like anything else. So when you put it on the calendar, Gabriel says, I just put out my, my journal right now. When you put it on the calendar, it becomes real. And own it. Treat these appointments like you treat anything else. When you tell your girl, hey, let's meet up for lunch on Thursday at seven, for Thursday at 4 p.m. Okay, great. It's on the calendar. For me, if it's out of my calendar, it doesn't exist. If, you, if we're friends and you be like, Christine, you want to do whatever, ask me, did you put it on the calendar? Because if I didn't, charge it to my mind and not my heart. <laughs> so the same thing goes for all of this. And I believe if you look back at the things that you say you wanted, that you say you want currently, career, personal, relationships don't matter. Like you have to put time in. Those of you who are single, you got to put time in on the apps. You got to make time to swipe right and left. Yes or no, right? You got to make time to be open to go on dates. Or are you just going to be talking about, I'm so tired of being single. I want to meet somebody but you ain't putting in no work. You're not swiping, you're not going on dates, you're not texting, FaceTiming. Like, how do you expect to get the thing that you want? So I say that in jest, but seriously, like, as we look at the things that we say we want, procrastination does not serve us. Hey, Denise, right? It doesn't serve us. So I think the more we see, we look at our list, we do the brain dump, and it doesn't matter how big or small, no one has to see your list. These are your personal desires, your personal goals, but you can also own and be like, I'm put, I've been procrastinating. What's on the other side of procrastination is fear. It's just covered up fear. Will I be good enough? If I really put my energy and my heart in this, what happens if I'm not good enough? What happens if people laugh? What happens if I suck? What happens if I try and then fail? It's all fear. So we put it off to avoid feeling uncomfortable, uncertain. We put it off fearing that we have to add, nah, I don't know what I'm doing. Now I have to ask people for help. I don't like asking people for help. I just want to do it myself. I don't want people in my business. But your breakthrough could be on the other side of that. People want to help. This world, no matter what the news tries to tell you, this world is filled with people who are givers and servants and want to be of service to you. But unless you share your goal, share your dream, share the, thing, share the things that you need assistance with, they can't help you. So now you're actually robbing people of blessing you in the way they would love to bless you if only they knew. Because you see it happens all the time. You finally open your mouth and be like, man, I just wish I'm trying to find, I'm trying to do this project and I just don't know any photographers. And then somebody be like, girl, I know five photographers. Let me call my friend. Do, 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 do. And next thing you know, and you're like, 
Oh my God, thank you so much. Had you not opened your mouth, closed mouths don't get fed. So it's time for us to open up. Open up, ask for the help that we need and just own the fact that you do want this. <laughs> my dog is snoring. I think the hardest question to ask him when we were talking tonight in my inner circle, I think even, even for myself and I had to own it, it's that fear of the unknown and fear of gosh, I'll put in all this work and then what if it's not good enough? What if I'm not good enough? Am I thinking too big? Am I thinking too small? Keep setting your goals high. If the goal feels too attainable, it's not big enough. You don't have to know every step. And the last thing I want to leave you with is when a goal feels like a huge mountain you have to climb. Remember that, you know, I hate this analogy, but I'm going to say it anyway. The best way to eat an elephant is one bite at a time. There's no way you can eat an elephant. There's no way you can just run up to the mountain like that. It's going to, it's step by step by step. You're going to get tired. You're going to take a break. Someone, someone might come up behind you be like, come on, girl, we could do this. Come on. Come on, brother, we can do this. Five more steps, okay. And you get closer and closer to your dream, closer and closer to your goals. So just wanted to put that in your heart and your spirit. We talked about it tonight at length with a bunch of my clients and that was the through line. Um, but uh, you got this. But guess what? You might do this brain dump tonight in your journal or in a piece of paper about the things you've been saying you wanna work on. And you may find that some of the things on that list are no longer important to you now. They're no longer important to you in this moment. And then that's okay. And guess what? We get to scratch those off and be like, a year ago, I thought that was important. Right now, it's not. Hell, you might be like, this coronavirus got me rethinking everything about life. That's not important to me right now. If I die tomorrow, if I only had six months left to live, and money was no object, and I could, and I knew I couldn't fail, and no, no one could talk me out of it. What would I be going for? What would I be doing? These are powerful questions to ask yourself. I don't care how old you are. You ain't too old. You ain't too young. You ain't too fat. I don't care what you've been through in your life. Everything that you've been through has made you who you are today, and you have a story to share, and you have something special. So, it's important to reevaluate your dreams and your goals often. Once a year is not enough on New Year's. Checking with yourself, checking with your spirit every night, every day. When you wake up in the morning, you know when you wake up and you're not up, up. You know, we got to repeat it. You ain't up, up. That's my best meditative time. Kind of roll over, kind of look out the window. I haven't put the solution in my eye. I'm just kind of half looking. I just sit there and I, I lay there and I just stare at the window. I see the little squirrels. I thank God for another day. And then I just check in with myself. I check in with my heartbeat. I check in with what I want to accomplish. I acknowledge I'm a very driven person. I acknowledge that sometimes my to-do list for the day is really a to-do list for the month. And that's a gears for me to understand. Like, Christine, you're setting yourself up for failure every day by making a to-do list of 5,000 things. Like, that was that took years of growth for me to get to even admitting that. I'd be like, I'm going to do this, do this. Yeah, let's get it. Yeah, yeah. And then I only get two things done because I underestimate how much time something's going to take. And then I was like, oh, look how much stuff I didn't finish. So once I saw the trend in that, I was like, I'll let myself make the to-do list for the day or for the week. I let myself do it because I need to feel that. And then I, I, and then I, at the top, if I wrote this week, I write this month. And then I'm reminded that I have all month to do this. But check in with yourself often because what I think right now, especially, you know, this moment in time has us rethinking everything what's important. And one thing I know for sure is, and we talked about this last week on Actors Daily Bread, is our art is important. Our art is important. And we are a gift and we can be a gift to ourselves and to so many other people. So stay encouraged. 
create, write, how, whatever you're feeling, write it out. I feel like I need to light an incense because I feel like, yeah, you know, <laughs> give thanks, peace and blessings. <laughs> That's where I am right now. Like I'm just in a place of gratitude to just be here, to, to be connecting to you. And if any of this is, is, is uplifting you in any way, then the work is done and pass it on. All of us can affect, everything we do is a ripple effect. And, you know, as Michael Beckwith always says, our goal should be to be a beneficial presence on this planet. So let's keep doing that. But it starts with you checking in with yourself first. Um, so thank you for watching this Actors Daily Bread. If you missed any part of this, the replay will be available. And also, if you haven't found me on YouTube, please come follow me on YouTube. Follow me on Instagram, Actress Christine Horn. YouTube, just type Christine Horn or Act as Bread. You will find me, no problem. And this is episode 220. So you can binge during this quarantine and get your life and do the work and check in. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you for letting me uh, be on the journey with you. Bye.